Welcome to Pros and Cons, a podcast by writers for writers, brought to you by Precipice Fiction. Precipice Fiction would like to acknowledge the people of the Eora and Dorag Nations as the original custodians and storytellers of the land this podcast was created on. Hey guys, just making a little public service announcement thing here. Uh, We try and make this content for you guys as much as possible, people who uh, are maybe just starting writing or who just like listening to writers and hearing what their opinions are. And we always want to know how we can make the show better, how we can improve it, um, what you would like to hear. We've made a little contact uh, link that you can click down in the about section, the, the show notes. Uh, jump on there, it'll take you to a website where you can fill in your details and ask us any questions you want or make any requests you want. And um, yeah, I'd really suggest you do that because we're trying to make it better and better for you. And obviously, the more we hear back from you, the more likely we are to do fun stuff that you like. So yeah, feel free to drop us a line if you get a chance. I'm here with the wonderful Catherine Jinx, uh, writer, Australian author of, I think, more than 60 novels you've done? No, more than 50. Well, 50 50. books. There have been some picture books and... Oh, okay. Yep, yep, yep. Well, so yeah, 50, 50. Okay, cool. So there's plenty of plenty of uh, of written work out there, which is fantastic. Many awards as well, I believe, which is great. I, the one I'm thinking of is uh, for, it was Shepard, you won the, um, the Australian Horror Writers? Um, yes, I did. Yeah, best yes. Australian shadows. Yeah, exactly. Cool. And many others, one for, for Evil Genius uh, as well, I believe. Um, yeah, thank you so much for meeting with us. It's, it's, it's a pleasure. Um, so, look, I'll just jump right into it. Um, you are extremely pro- prolific. You've been writing since the mid, mid-90s, mid am I right? Or um, I, When did I first publish? I think the first publish was actually like 91 or 2. No, 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 it was... Yeah, look, I can't remember, to be honest. It was very early. No- In a minute. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. It was either 89 or 90. Okay, fantastic, fantastic. Uh, yes. Yes. Um, you you have written a lot of books since then, um, as as we said, around fifty or so, which is quite a um, quite a pace to be releasing uh, a material at, which which I'm in, in awe of. I think you and I, I was doing a little read of your FAQ, and I think you and I have a similar um, thing when it comes to writing, in that we really enjoy the writing process and we really like making new things and going forward with that. But it's the editing that we sort of uh, get caught up on a little bit. Uh, am I right? Well, it's not so much even my own editing. Like I edit the, I don't know how profane you could. No, no, you're fine. You're fine. Edit the fuck out of my stuff. Okay, yeah, you're I right. I mean, I I read it and read it and read it and edit and read it and read it and edit and read it and read it. You know, like I, I I can't tell you how much I do that. Like it's just insane. You know, but it's when the edit comes back from someone mm. else. I've been doing it for so long that I do know what I'm doing. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah, um, sure. Often what happens too these days is editors are very overworked and they okay. can't really put the effort in that they need to. And so yeah. they'll miss things. They'll say something and you'll go, that was like five pages back. I mentioned it. Did you not see it? You know, like right, okay. because one of the skills I've developed over decades is holding the whole book in my head, like really mm. holding it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they they can't be expected to do that because they, they haven't been living with it for ten months or whatever. Sure, sure. Twelve months. So they aren't quite as on top of things usually. I mean, I've had some sure. brilliant editors, but they're few and far between, frankly. Like okay, yeah, yeah. But yeah. it's partly so, the situation at the moment. They'd be okay if they weren't appallingly overworked and underpaid. Like it's a, yeah, right. You know, so this is. We're talking about a uh, a a publishing house, um, tra- traditional publishing, and I'll, I'll come back to that yeah. term. Uh, yeah. Traditional publishing house house editor, where you've sort of subscri- submitted a, a manuscript and they've accepted, it and they're going, okay, we're going through it now. We have to edit it and go through it. This yes. isn't someone that you've paid to edit your work. No, 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 no. no. Okay, sorry, cool. sorry. Yeah. No, no. that's okay because it, it's a different. They're two different. If things, anybody and- wants to pay me to edit their stuff, by the way, I'm happy to do it. <laughs> Absolutely, um, yeah. Because yeah. it, it's um, becoming this sort of new world where a lot of uh, yes. Um, obviously, the, the traditional model is such that that yeah, uh, you the know, traditional model is through. in a lot of trouble. Like it's at the yeah. moment really bad. Like it's yeah, hard yeah, to yeah. sell, and it's partly hard to sell. I think because it's mass. It's a they're looking for a mass market because to produce a, I mean they do have print on command, but a lot of people don't do it. Um, okay. I think it, this this kind of niche publishing hmm. 
is where because things are breaking up into niches on the internet it's yep. you know and trying to do that in a traditional public house, publishing house is quite hard uh, mm. i mean that trying to appeal to massive amounts of people is quite hard i mean it happened. I was there when it happened with Harry Potter and Twilight sure. and all yeah. of them. Like it happened and they got so excited and they just, and there was a lot of money around and it was so great. <laughs> but now it's changed again and it's it's hard. It's very yeah. Hard. Yeah. And I guess we see these, um, cause I read a lot of sort of commercial fiction. I read this really great one by uh, um, Rebecca Kwong recently uh, who did the Poppy Wars back in the day and it's called Yellow Face. And it is literally about the, the writing and publishing market and it's um it just seems like a bit of a nightmare honestly <laughs> like and this is at the, the top top echelon of like you know what's my, going on my agent's been doing this for much longer than i've been writing like she's hmm. i don't know probably close on 40 years she says she's never seen it so bad ever all right okay so she's getting quite is, <laughs> yeah sure and is that exclusively australian or i think you think that's international i don't know um i don't know I mean, she, it's harder to get international sales now, mm. um, definitely, but that's kind of partly, there's more gatekeepers now. She used to go out directly to international agents sure, and they would place me and that's what happened when I managed to get into America and everything. Yeah, right. It was okay. strictly with the agents, but now it tends to go through your publishers and that's, you know. Right. Okay. So there's there's just more more. There's a whole structure. Like once upon a time, I used to go. She used to go to an agent. So I used to have to pay two lots of agent fees, but the agent would go to a, get an American publisher, and then the American publisher would pay their royalties straight to me. But now what happens is Australian or Australian publishers want international sales, mm. want the international rights like the full rights, world rights. Sure. So yeah. when they, if they manage to sell it, and they sell it to another, maybe to another publisher, but the publisher, the international publisher's royalties come back through my publisher. So they mm. use those royalties to pay off my advance. So uh, I don't, yes. I don't get it straight. You yeah. Know so it's, it's being, it's being siphoned on the way back. Right. Siphoned. Yeah. That's okay. the way it works. Yeah. Right. Well, look, let's take it back to when you first started. How did you actually get into um, becoming a, a published author? What did that look like? You know, um, yeah, it was a different. Old, it was a different old world then. Oh, yeah, I'll bet. Okay, I'll bet. many many years ago, and I was working for Westpac, okay, <laughs> um, on their staff magazine, and I was I wrote this book that's completely been forgotten. It was my second book that made a hit. That was Pagan's Crusade. First okay. book was nothing but it was okay it was publishable mm. just didn't pop possibly not now I don't know <laughs> um <laughs> and I wrote it and the thing is I was really lucky it was a mm. luck because I knew a woman who knew a woman who knew an agent and okay. the thing was though it has to be said so I rang so I managed to get this agent's phone number and she answered the phone and I sort of explained I was a friend of a friend you know and she got and she was so I knew that she went okay well <laughs> I guess I can have a look at it it'll take it'll probably take me it might take me two or three months I'm warning you you know sure, sure. so and I went okay that's fine and of course in those days it was a manuscript yeah it was a physical phone, manuscript right? you know Crazy. and um and I sent it off I didn't even have a computer Okay, I typed it. So um, that's how old I am. And so I sent it off, and she got back to me in about two or three days. And she goes, "This is great. We can publish this." And I'm like, oh wow! <laughs> oh, yeah. it, was, it was like a magic moment. Yeah, um, yeah, right. But in those days, it was the children's. It was kind of hard, but kind of easier. Mm. Um, there weren't many books. There weren't as many books being published. You know yep. what I mean? Actually, yeah. so it was a it was a smaller raft that you had to climb onto, hmm. but I don't know. It was it such was more a money to those ones that like those ones that were being yes, published. Yes, it was. It was, yeah. and see, I was get, it was a children's book. Okay, and in those days, the children's book 
Council of Australia had such an amazingly important role to play. Yeah, and I recall if, that. Yeah, yeah, and if you got on their the short list, which my second book did get on, it mm. made such a difference. Like it was huge. Nowadays, yeah. not so much. Okay. Yeah. So I got, with my first book, it it didn't do anything. Like especially children's books, you didn't get any much like you didn't get much in the way of reviews or anything like that sure, sure, sure. Read review. i mean there were some there were three there was there was magpies there was oh, there was something else there were like two or three like educational type teaching type librarian type yeah places where they reviewed children's books and very little else i i think they'd review you if you got shortlisted in the sort of papers you know okay but um but because it made such a difference like the CBC was awards were so big, it made a big difference to me to get sure. that listing. So that's what happened to me. So I was kind of lucky. But also that second book I wrote, Pagan's Crusade, it was different. It was very different because it was, um, I actually first wrote it as a radio play. And and I couldn't sort of, I didn't know really anybody in radio and I, I tried and it didn't really work. So I thought I'll just rewrite it as a book. So it was rewritten as a kind of an odd, it was like, First person, present tense, humorous and slangy, but set in the medieval times. So it was it was weird. And in fact, my agent couldn't get it published initially. Like it was, she got about three slapbacks. Okay. And I would have given up at that point because I was very new. Sure. And I didn't know from any, anything. And she said, no, 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 this is really good. We can find a publisher. And she found, I think it was the fourth or fifth publisher um, that accepted it mm. and um, and it went really well and it got shortlisted so you know but it was a little bit different from everything at that stage okay yeah and this was like a, I think you described it on your FAQ as a, like it's kind of Monty Python-esque yes, like a, yes. and a yeah. black yeah. Quite funny. yeah oh yeah okay yeah, cool, yeah, cool. Yeah. I'm with you. all right cool um well, let's have a look at a little bit of the writing process itself, because um, as, as much as I do like to talk shop about the uh, the ins and outs of the industry, because uh, it's always a pleasure to talk <laughs> to people who are actually been in it. Um, yes. So, look, are you a, are you like a taker outer or a putter in? And what I mean by that is, are you the sort of person who gets to the end of a manuscript and, and manuscript and goes, "Oh, there's way too much here. I need to take this out," or are you the opposite, where you have to go back and go, "Oh, wow, I've lost, a lot, I've left a lot of stuff out." Or is it just you, you've pretty much okay, done that? It's interesting. That's, it's, that's such a long time. Okay. It's funny. I, it's just become such second nature. Okay. Hmm. So I, okay. I used to be a person who just wrote, sat out and wrote. And then with my, I think it was my third, like I, the third full novel, I could never finish. I hadn't okay. thought about it enough. And then I thought to myself, okay, this is not going to happen again. I'm going to plan the ass out of this and okay. so I now do massive great um synopses before I start like a like mm. some kind of screenwriter like I okay with big chunks of dialogue I basically work out my whole plot not necessarily entirely the chapter breakdowns because sometimes things go longer than you think and all that but vaguely like vaguely pinned down to chapters so I've okay. got it all there and the reason I do that is because when you're doing something really long you just get to the point where you think you're going to die and never want to see it again and you yeah. know like, yeah, sure. you know how far is the end off I'm, I'm but if you've got this plan here all you have mm. to do is oh, I've got my plan okay what's the next thing you yeah, know like right. you're getting really tired of it um you're just finding it hard to get that spark. When yeah, you... I, I'm getting to that point where it's like, um, because I, I usually just just sit down and go, and then I'll get to about, I don't know, maybe like 30,000 words and be like, oh, my God, it's, yes. it's not even halfway. What What's going on? So now what I've started to do is it's not quite that, but I'll, I'll like write out a little, just, just a, a dot point list of things that are going on, not to the end of it. I haven't done it to the end of the book yet, but at least for the next like big chunk. And then I guess when I get to that, I'll, I'll chunk it out again. And that's been really helpful, just being like, oh, no, this yeah. is the yeah. thing that happens next. Yeah. You know? because, and so when you do it like that, you don't, 
usually have too much or too little because you've done a lot of that planning. You've done sure. a lot of creative work beforehand. Like it's amazing. Yeah. I can spend months planning it and working it out before I actually sit down and write chapter one. Like I, yeah, I sure. do that now. And it just means that A, you don't get the, the really terrible edits from yeah. people at the end. Can I just also say on the subject of edits? Yeah, yeah, please. I'm old now. Like I'm really quite old. So I'm. You're not that old, Catherine. <laughs> yeah, I am. But, you know, I've been doing it for so long. I've realized you have to change. Like mm. I, what I wrote at the beginning, I wrote, look at some of my early books and I think, oh my God, mm. you know, it's it's so slow. Like yeah. it's what things have got faster and faster and faster because people watch movies most of the time and they're used to Hollywood three act structures they just sure they don't, they don't they can't it's amazing they just can't wait can't yeah. wait well you know because I, I was reading through um I'm, I'm going through traced right now and the beginning of that is like she's on a phone call she's and i won't give any spoilers but she's on a phone call she's talking to someone and immediately you can see there's something very serious going on and and like almost from the first sentence you i can't remember what it is but it's the, yeah. i think it's something about how, how the woman's breathing or something and you can just tell something's going on here and it's not not yeah cool. All right. Um, yeah. I yeah. mean, that is partly, okay, so what's happened is gradually over the, and just writing and these those are thrillers books, too. This yeah, these are, are thrillers. Right. Yeah. And I, I'm quite good at it, but I had to be kind of beaten into submission a bit by the editor. Hmm. It's this push-pull thing. She's kind of trained me to some degree to, to be as, as lean and mean and as, lean and mean as possible to the sure. point where I'm like no no we have to keep that yeah. like that's 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 you you have to have some scene setting description you have to have it like you have to because mm. you've got to visualize this you've got to be able to see it you've got to have it. Yeah. it I know it slows it down for like point you know 12 seconds I Cross. know that yeah. like yeah. but I've got to have it. So it's getting to that point now, especially with thrillers, though. Has to be right. Yeah, of course. With art, with art, more artsy literary stuff, they'll let, I think they it's give more you a room bit to breathe. Room yeah. To move. yeah. But, you know, when you look at the old novels that start off, you know, in 1746 in the county of M, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. a gentleman, like it took, it takes so long to get into it. Like, which is fun. Yeah. I love it. I love it. As long as you feel that you're in the hands of someone who understands what they're doing. Like, yeah. Awesome. They're like, talk. Talking yeah. about a more for like five five pages. Somebody's talking about the father of the heroine for a while. Yeah. Like you know what I mean? Like whereas He was a well groomed anyway. dapper man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's just sort of people have just got more and more they've got less and less time to yeah. mech around. And look, I feel the same way. Like sure. I'm a bit if you if you haven't got me by about the end of page two, I'm like, mm, mm. Mm, mm, you know. Yeah. Um, not exactly, it doesn't have to be immediately action-y. It just has to mm. be the sense that... It has to be engaging. Engaging. There has to be some sense yeah. that this person knows what they're doing. They know exactly yeah. what they're doing. This person's walking down the street. I'm really interesting to see what happens next. You know what I mean? There's just, yeah. I don't know, there's something. Yeah, Whereas yeah, yeah. That, there's too much. I'm not a big fan of very, I don't know, atmospheric poetic writing. Mm. Um if I notice the writing too much, if I notice things like turns of phrase or stuff, if I just notice it just a bit too much, it distracts me. It from pulls the... you out of it. Yeah, no, we're, we're, the, we're the same way. Like I, I like to, I can, and I'm sure you can as well, write like flowery prose um, if, if I want to, but I find very rarely is that actually appropriate because it's like you've got to, you've got to move the story along, you know, you've got to have like a narrative uh momentum you know and and you can give, you can give a good synonym you can give you can use verbs in an interesting way mm. you can use slap or something in an unusual way to get attention and it works that yeah. kind of that sense of bang that's a new way of looking at things but the yeah. sort of continual complications that can that used occasionally that's incredibly yeah. effective concision, but concision. too much of it 
it just I don't know it just really annoys me <laughs> no, I know um, what you mean I know what you mean it, I uh yeah. and I find a lot of a lot of uh a lot of writing that these days is is going along that path where it's like just just tell me tell me what happened like give me the facts and like you know yeah you can give me a really nice simile or metaphor or like a you know well, you a, a particularly yes. strange adjective that goes in there and that that'll like hook yeah. you and be like that yeah. but you're right if if you become hung up on the 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 details of it of how it's put down and there's like more than you know it's several sentences where you're really like laboring and it's like like i remember reading as a child this is a child um reading the the red wall books i'm not, not sure if you're familiar with those but it's there's it's about a bunch of like uh, an anthropomorphic mice and and stuff and they're all little warriors and things and they would dedicate pages and pages to talking about this feast and i'm like i don't care how glazed the cranberries are i just don't care just tell me who's stabbing who or, or at least tell oh, me well, i think that, that might be a, a might be a devotee of um let's face it talking yeah that's it. fair that that is yeah fair. like sure. it, it is it is a very it, fantasy thing yeah it's a feast feasts are feature greatly and yeah. People not love feasts. talking I'm, I'm just trying to think like actually the narnia books had a, a touch of it as well um mm. But then, you know, with kids' books way back, one of the things you'll notice quite a lot is that they will put a lot of food in them because yeah. kids like food. Like, and I remember, to be honest, being hungry when I was a child. I don't know, you know, we, we had very stern meal times and we oh, yeah, okay. And so I was, uh, so, you know, um, there's a lot of stuff about picnics, like toe to toad hall, you know, like the, the yep. All of that, they always have picnics and they talk about their food a lot. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so does Inesbit, lots of food. So with kid stuff, that's what they would have, it would have been a combination of Tolkien and the Yeah, fact you're getting a double whammy. Yeah, yeah. Book, used to have a lot of food. But see, that the thing is, I, I can remember reading um the, the uh, not the name of the wind, uh, Wind in the Willows and <laughs> not being at all put off. I don't even remember the food stuff in that because I just remember it being such a great story and like hearing yeah. about like Toad's Adventures and Badger being this like cranky old guy. And like it was it was very engaging because I don't think they had these big, maybe they did have big chunks of paragraphs where they were talking about the picnic. But either way, you can, something if you're good enough, it, you can, you can yeah. surmount that kind of, because that's the old fashioned style of writing. And if you yeah. can... If you can, that's the other thing. If you can, if they're good enough writers, but they're old-fashioned, they're so good that you just slide into it anyway, mm. and you can cope with the old style of writing. Yeah. If you plug at it, though, a lot of people can't cope with Victorian writing anymore. They just can't. But you know, it's it's interesting. It is what it is. Yeah. Um, now I've noticed you you move a lot between uh, genres and things, which is something I'm always, as a writer, always very nervous of doing because I'm like, oh, you know, like I, I'm thinking in terms of branding and be like, oh, well, I want to be a horror writer, which is a, a lot of what I write is horror. But right now I'm doing sort of a literary commercial thing, so I'm 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 like, how is is this an issue to be able to yeah. do this one thing and and have have an, a readership and a, you know author base, uh, sorry, a reader base going through the stuff and then, oh, well, if I do this thing, will they like that? Do I need to do a new author name? You know, stuff like that. How have you found that, but being sort of moving between genres um, a little bit? Really, that's a really good question. The um, I've kind of shot myself in the foot. <laughs> Basically, you know, because I started so long ago. Yep. What I was, okay, I was put in the box of children's writer for a long time because that's what I wrote for. Sure. I was very young. I was only... I think 25 when I wrote my first one and I was not very adult at that point anyway so you know I was fairly childlike so I, I was writing children's books for ages now the, the good thing about children's books is that you can skip around but you're still a children's writer so okay I, I skipped around in all kinds of genres within the children's book era now you can't sort of do that as well as a as an adult writer yeah, so I've right. got to do all these exciting things because I got bored so easily and I just needed sure. to move around and also I think it was significant that I started off in children's writing because children's writing it's all about the plot and getting there fast because you have to sure um kids get bored they're not gonna they're not gonna they're not going to put up with you if you don't. So, and that's what, you know, and the fact that I ended up going to thrillers and things, I think, you know, it's all that, it's all plot based. However, yeah. I have done adult sort of historical fiction, which which was slower. But um, but what happened was I was branded as a children's author anyway. And when you start writing for adults after that, you have a bugger of a yeah. time. 
Um, oh yeah, it's an uphill battle for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's okay if you're an adult writer who dabbles in children because it's it's slumming, sure. but yeah, okay. going the other yeah. way is just yeah. really hard. So I was kind of a, and I know I've done it and I have, but again, it blurred my brand, which nobody ever had yeah. until about. 10 years ago so yeah, right. um, I, I just all I did was um keep myself interested <laughs> sure. and yeah, that's yeah. um as well, I'm still up, writing that's the important thing yeah well I'm still writing it's harder and harder to get published um sure, sure. also if you've got a long history of in a funny sort of way it's better if you've got a long history of it and it's worse because You've got, if you've got a long history and it's not the history of, you know, Peter Carey or yeah. Helen Garner or something, if it's sort of a fairly, it's an okay history, it doesn't work mm. for you every new one you get because it doesn't look like you go. Whereas if oh, you're I see. You don't you don't box yourself in. Like Peter, people think of Peter Carey and they're like, oh, yeah, great historical fiction. And he's like, yeah, but I kind of want to write this like romance fantasy. Yeah, thing but now. Peter like, Carey basically is really successful and so is Helen yeah. Garner. But if you're not really like a cultural icon and you sure. and you keep going and you trying to get published, people look at your backlist and they think, well, you didn't do too well for this, 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 and this. Maybe you won't do too well for this. You know what I mean? Right. Whereas okay. if you're new, they don't know what you're going to do. So it's all very exciting. So you could you could be the bit the bit like I mean, look at I mean, you know, J.K. Rowling was a sort of a bit, and it was like the most successful bit ever. And sure, um, yeah. and it can happen with yeah, I mean no Jack Graham Simpson you with um you know wrote the Rosie Project that went that yeah. was the first one and that just blew it out of the water yeah it and, exploded and that that's what people are looking for so they kind of like sometimes a newbie and yeah. Joe Harper like, yeah you know, you're with the dry right yeah, yeah like if they can do that and so it's Mind you, and you see, you've got somebody like Gary Disher. Now, Gary Disher went along like me for ages and ages, and then suddenly it just flipped. And and he's a, sort of a really, he's selling very well on this kind of thriller, like a a, a crime a crime series thing. And he's but he yeah. he put in the hard yards for years. As did what's her name? Um, you know, um, Big Little Light. Oh, what's it called? Big Little Lies. No, what's it called? I know the. I know the. the yeah, yeah, yeah. The, I'm just. I suddenly had this brand. Leanne Moriarty. Now she oh, went yeah, yeah, yeah. years doing her thing. Mind you, it was always that it was. She had a brand, and she was okay. doing. Okay, and they were sticking in a lane, were they? Yeah, and she was sticking in her lane, and she did it for years, and was kind of plugging away, and then it took off. So it, yeah, it, it can happen, but it's a, perhaps it. People are less. Yeah. Anyway, it just. Yeah. So it's it's like there's there's a value in because that's always like I, I always get really nervous about like oh you know this is this is my debut and I technically I put out a collection of short stories but like you know it was on it was on Amazon no one saw it so um, but if you're putting on out like a debut novel it's like oh this is my debut no it's it's like it's like popping your literary cherry you don't want to like so you want to pick your battles there I guess um, uh, which but then that, that gets muddied up with the uh, with the um, self-publishing thing where you can kind of do that and that is i think is more regarded a little a little bit more regarded now but i think is still fairly poo-pooed in literary circles it's like well that's not real writing which is not terribly yeah. fair but i i can see like i can it is but i think things are changing so much yeah 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 and just because of the money people are following the money you know like you, you if you can't make money from from a certain style of books or exactly. a certain pipeline of, of uh, you know, where the cash is going, yet things are going to have to change. And I think they are changing now, from what I can see, from the, the little that I've uh, seen of it. If um, I had any techno now, I'd be looking at that kind of thing probably now. Yeah, like TikTok. TikTok is, I mean, it's a, it sounds like a cliche, but like it is, I was just listening to an author interview, a podcast yesterday about a girl who blew up on TikTok and she started in like, fantasy uh tiktok when it was just very small and she just made this little video and it blew up and then this fan base sort of swelled around her and now she's you know she's she's published all around the world although mind you not full time yet so um oh, okay. i don't know it's kind of hard to say um yeah, yeah well, that's the thing. i mean if yeah. that had been around i probably would have done it 
Like, you know what I yeah. mean? You're, you're yeah, a, yeah, yeah, from sure. your era. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. But I have, as I plug it. Do you have a YouTube channel? A new right? YouTube channel. Woo! Yeah. What's what's <laughs> that? Just give us give us the, the, what's the name of the YouTube okay. channel? Okay. So because I was looking at a lot of YouTube channels to calm myself down in the sort of cottage core, pretty, pretty English style travel and all that kind of stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. middle aged person. Um, I suddenly thought, hey, I could do this and maybe talk about <laughs> writing. Your brand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And talk about writing at the same time and my books get a bit of so I literally only like it was it's not even a week ago. Um I yeah. started no, but I've seen I've seen one of the videos. It's very good. I I liked it a lot. Con um, the content I'm making furiously in case I have to turn around and do a whole bunch of work when I can't film. Sure. But, and yeah. also it's really good weather for filming at the moment. Whereas yeah, totally, you know, totally. Um, but it's called Storybook Cottage Writer YouTube channel. Storybook Cottage Writer YouTube Storybook channel. Storybook Cottage Writer. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get the cottage core and I'm trying to get the people who are interested in books. So yeah. That's good. No, that's 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 awesome. And I I yeah, I, I looked at it. It's, it's it's just a it's a nice sort of thing to watch and a nice thing to see um how someone who's been doing it for a while does it and let's be honest your cottage is it, it's exactly that like you go into it and it looks like a cottage she's got this huge um fire uh roaring you've got a nice little desk and a nice little typewriter that you do you can see it here on the screen it's just yeah. everything's very very wooden and uh like, like you know wood nice polished wood floors and it's a beautiful place to write which is which is thank great. you yes yes it um, is. Mm -hmm. just circling back to the um to the 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 career writer thing I think one of the one of the good things. I mean, we did talk about uh, having a debut go off and be very exciting, and everyone be like, "Oh, they're doing something new, or they haven't done too much before." Um, but I think one of the good things about writing, as opposed to say music, um, is that you aren't really cut off by your age. Like you can mm -hmm. you can continue to write. And look, obviously, if you have a history, that's going to um, that's going to to sort of put a I don't want to say taint, but like put put a certain thing on your brand. Um, but it is like you said, Le Leanne Moriarty writing the same thing for a long long amount of time, and then um, kind of took off. So it is something that because obviously the craft is always improving, and people know good writing when when they see it. And you're a good writer, like it's I, I, I and I've read some of your stuff, and it is it is good writing, um, in my humble opinion. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Have, have you got any? Have you got any tips for longevity in terms of not burning yourself out? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I guess, look, honestly, oh, okay. I, I it's, started it's off. Hard, hard, yeah, no, it's, 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 it's okay. It's a, it's a sort of a life. It, it goes into life at that point. Okay. My, okay. There's a few things. My agent said, many years ago and she said it every so often again she said she says the real writers and the and the, and, the, and the people who aren't real writers and that she said the real writers are just simply people who cannot function in life without it mm. like it helps them live um yeah. and they can't live very well without it and so they just keep doing it some kind of creative thing of some nature because that's how they have to go so yeah. the longevity of it is whether you still need it yeah all that time you know or the other thing is I started off writing and I had a job and I managed it anyway it was a pretty of a nine to five of that job so thank god yeah okay and um, you were writing in your off time were you like at and I was writing in my off time However, I wouldn't have wanted to do that forever. No. I, I think it's just too hard. That's a lot. And I did get married and then we moved to Canada and I couldn't get a work. Oh, it was hard. Well, we moved to Canada in the middle of this massive recession back in 1992. Oh, yeah, there was a recession. 1993. Yeah. I, was, I was two, so I couldn't. Remember. Yeah, yeah. So I was like... I couldn't really find a job anyway. So, and in those days, just for very, like, so he was earning the full time and I was earning some money, but not as much as I would have not. See, I, I've sort of gone, not earning much, not, not, and then I sort of really went up and then yep. I went down again. So it's okay. been like, so like a bit of a bell yeah, curve yeah. thing. So in a way, partly because I got married, 
um, and there was a pooling of resources. Yes, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. that allowed me a bit more of scale. Time. Yeah, so there was that, and it, that gave me. Oh, oh, also, in ninety five, I think I managed. It was after Pagan's Crusade, and maybe even the second one come out, the Pagans, Pagan in Exile. I got a grant. I got a literary grant. It's the only literary grant I've ever got. Okay. Um, and it was for three years. And oh and, wow! And it was for twenty five. It was twenty five thousand dollars a year. Jeez, that's more than the Vogel. It was so great. It was that's just amazing. the best ever. And look, honestly, I keep on saying like that was an investment they made in me. So that was yeah. like seventy five thousand dollars, and it worked because I made back for the like I calculated at one point. Because I felt like a complete wanker and a complete yeah. parasite, the way people talk about writers and parasites, sure, sure, you know. Sure. And I realised that I, I'd sold so much overseas hmm. and I was bringing in all this foreign currency and I was bringing in, I brought in over, at one point I was, you know, I, I sort of added it up over whatever, seven years or something. I brought in over a million dollars in foreign currency. That's crazy. Australian. For yes. your writing, you, you brought my in a million dollars to Australia. Earlier. Yes, so it was to me insane. like it was over a fair few years, but no, it was, I get it. I get it. Yeah, yeah, it was for it was US dollars, some pounds, some you know, and all of that. And so I was yeah. helping the GVP. Yeah. You know, like I, they they invested in me. That's and a they ten to one investment. Money. That's that's yeah. good ROI. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, I know. So I, you know, I, I was like, giving people grants is not a waste of money. It's not a parasite. Mm. Like I haven't been a parasite. You yeah, know, it's, a, it's a cultural stuff. investment. Like it that is, sounds like a yeah. wanky term, but it is a cultural investment. And God knows, but it's also a monetary investment. You got your money. Yeah. You, well, they got that's what money. I mean. Yeah, the 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 money is derived from the culture. You know, it's yeah. like you're you're yes. like here's this here's a little injection of cash that we're going to use to let you create culture, and then you can an export that will bring home money to us yes. as a country. Exactly. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that's great. Let's have a little chat. Um, I, I know you haven't actually had any anything made, but you you did mention on your FAQ that you've had several offers uh, for f people to make movies or, or maybe TV shows of your book. Can you t tell us a little bit about how that sort of works? Yeah. Okay. So I think it's happened about it's m more than half a dozen times. Okay, over the many years. All right. Sure. Um, and what happens is because I've always worked through the same agent, she will get she will get a call or, or an email from a producer who wants to option the book. And basically that is not anything. Sure. <laughs> I mean, basically, if you're lucky, you might get 2,000 bucks for that. Okay. And... It, it almost never happened. Like, I've, it's, I've yet to get anything made. Sure, sure. Uh, there's something happening at the moment. I won't talk about it, but it's probably m more possible than it's ever been before. But you get to this point when they're trying to raise the money. That's where it all falls apart. Of so course, you get yeah. the, produ the production company, whatever it is, it might be two people and a dog or it might be quite a solid little one. Mm -hmm. Um there were a couple I've had I've had I've had two Hollywood producers that was for Evil Genius both of them it didn't work it didn't happen and I've had a bunch of Australian producers for various things including Evil Genius that was again for um the, Evil Genius is the one that people have tried mostly sure. um, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they and they yeah. and they option it and either and this has happened both ways either you're not involved at all but my agent, who's thank God a lawyer, actually dry, mm. helps thrash out a contract. Um, and usually, I think you get the standard thing in the past, but Netflix has blown it all up, and so you know, and Disney yeah. and and the sort of the all of that sort of stuff. It's got really hard. But once yeah. upon a time, it was like you get around two or three percent of the re, it, the production budget. Okay. Which can, and like, for example, there might be, 
a bottom floor to, so that no matter what the production budget is, you get at least 150000 if they start to film. Okay, sure, sure. Um, but that has, I've never got to that point, ever. Because yeah, yeah. what happens is they often get, they get a whole pitch done. This is happening right now. They've got uh, pilot episodes thrashed out. They've got their costings. They've got all of this stuff. And then they go and then they need a certain amount of money and they go and try to find partners. Like even, even if you get one partner, they'll mm. only cough up so much money if some other person will come in sure. and well, you've got to get money raised, as wing, you would expect. Dollar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a lot but of money. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. So basically one over and over and over again, it just doesn't happen. So, okay. yeah, and, sure. and it's, and it's so, and look, it can take 10 years. Like it's it's a it's a slow, difficult process, and you're lucky if you, if it happens. Sure, yeah, and I've heard this from other authors too. I was I was authoring, uh, I was I was interviewing Keelan Patrick Burke the other day, who's a really good horror writer, and he was like, "Look, every time I get a, a, an option now, I'm like, yep, great, give me the money. Like, I'm I'm not, you know, I'm not crossing my fingers." And he hasn't he hasn't had anything made yet either, although he has in the same way had things optioned. So it sounds like it's a really, really, really tough gig. Um, once I got, um, in fact, once or no, twice I've had involvement in the screenwriting, and that was okay. great because it gave me an. It, I was being paid quite well to yep. learn how to screenwrite. It was sure. fantastic. I was yeah, working under awesome. a script editor. I was working under a script editor who did Babadook. Um, oh, really? Yeah, oh, and wow. I, and that was fantastic. Like that was the yeah. best experience, and it was. It, and you know what? It informed my writing afterwards as well because it's really? so, like, it can be an utter straitjacket screenwriting, but mm-hmm. the, I don't know, the, the sort of the, the the sense of control that people have, the immense sense of control. I've never had, I've been a bit sloppy. It's hard to explain. The, them, the sense of thematic control, the sense of controlled imagery, everything, everything is under control because it's so expensive. So everything is so under control that you feel like I think it helped with my thriller writing. In yeah, fact, okay. I know it. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, in fact, after writing that script, I like after adapting a couple of times my books as scripts, I thought, I wonder if I can write an original one, right? So I sat down and I wrote this script. And, of course, I know no, nobody re- I mean, I know a few people, but not to have any kind of sure. push. And, of course, it wasn't ever going to go anywhere. And then I made it into, so I made it into Shepherd. Because oh, right. Shepherd. Yeah, you mentioned so that. So that is actually from a screenplay. And right. you can tell you wrote the screenplay the, first and then that it translated into a screenplay first and then I made it into a um yeah, and you can tell from the structure it's so, um, you know, it's so three-act. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, so it, it really helped me. In, in a way, it really helped me, I think, mm. too, because it's it, in a way the way pe- people watch movies these days has informed the way they read. And so it's actually good to have all that stuff. and to yeah. Put- yeah, yeah, yeah. Know how to know how to c- get that condensed format down and put a book like that. That makes a lot yeah. of sense, actually. I, I really do want to learn to screenwrite one day because I, I think it's just a great skill to have. And uh, our mutual friend Ali is actually a, a really good screenwriter. Yes, so yes, I might yes. have to hit her up for uh, for some some tips. All right, before we head off, uh, an important thing I haven't um, brought up yet, but I always this is kind of really the next step in my writing journey. Getting an agent. What do you want to look for in an agent? And uh, how should you approach them? Yeah, it's a bit of a problem for me now because it's I've just been out of that for so sure. Long. Yeah, of course. I mean, there course. aren't many yes. of them in Australia. Yeah, probably not many good ones either, right? I d- I honestly don't know. I mean, there there are some ve- there are some very good ones. I mean, the thing is about yeah. agents. Okay, a good agent knows the market that's their job so if you give them something and they're like oof so and so isn't going to take this but i think so and so are looking for this and if i tell them that that you know it's getting very hard though these days to mm. actually talk to people in the publishing industry because apparently since covid everybody's at home and it's they're sure. very stressed and uh, you know 
Um, but and that's the that's the age. Apart from okay, my agent's very rare because she is actually a lawyer. So yep. she was, she graduated as a lawyer. So her ability to do um, actual like you know contracts is extraordinary, and her ability to negotiate, they you know it's that's part of it. It's negotiating, and sure. and it's so great because you don't have to do it. And she deals with oh my god the worst stuff. Like um, there's this thing, and it's great. It's fantastic. It's called. ELR, PLR, Educational Lending Rights and Public Lending Rights. And okay. basically what happens, because government libraries and schools buy your book and then lend them out to people, yes. that deprives yes. you of income, right? So okay. in, in, in response to that, they pay you a small amount of money. But if you've got a lot of books out there, it can make quite a lot of money. Sure, yeah. Quite a few thousand dollars. A royalty, essentially. It's kind of like a royalty, but it goes up and down. It depends what's on you. It depends how many people are borrowing, how many libraries you're in, all of that kind of stuff. But yeah, every sure. year you get one educational lending right for um, school libraries and um, just public lending rights for usual libraries. Um, so, oh, God, what was I talking about when I got into that? Uh, agents. Agents. ELA, agents. ELA. So, but getting that in is hideous and dealing with it is hideous like there's all this yeah, paperwork yeah. which yeah, i can't stand you know forms <laughs> and so she does it and then she just gives yeah, me right. the book and it's so great oh, so that's, great. Um, <laughs> so that's yeah, awesome. that and also her dealing with back and forth on on money writers aren't supposed to care about money it's just sure. so bizarre and yeah, if you yeah. and you'll get offers and there'll be no mention of the money and you say what's right. the money like you have it's to insane. bring it up. It's because yeah. you're just you're. It's your vocation. You don't care. You're like a nun. Yeah. You're just. just a, what, what's the term? Like a um a starving artist, right? Yeah. Like, star well, artist in a garret. It's been. Yeah. It's, it's not like it's changed. Yeah. You know, like yeah. it's just fact, pure I just what you do. Say, you know, it's anybody, so pure. <laughs> anybody interested in writing at all? My favorite book in the whole wide world is called New Grub Street by George Gissing. I'm gonna write that down. Yeah, that down. it's a. Street. It's for writers because it's about, it was written in a, like 1882 or something, and it's yeah. about a bunch of writers in different kind of writers. So there's a novelist, there's a journalist, there's an essayist, there, you know, like a sort of a paid essayist who's just churning stuff out. All of these different kinds of writers, all kind of interconnected, all trying to make their way in the world, and it's just, it just speaks to me so much, even <laughs> now. It's yeah. just like writer in a garret, there's a writer in a garret, literally. Yeah, yeah. Like there's so, like a, there's an artistic writer who's written sort of one great book, you know, oh, yeah. and you know this whole and the whole thing revolves around money. That's all it's about. Like right, it's so, yeah. it's so <laughs> fascinating. You have to read anybody. I will. That writer, sounds great. That sounds great. great. I'm gonna, it I'm sounds a bit now. slow, but then the minute it because it starts with it starts in the country. And mm -hmm. it's a it sort of feels a bit Jane Austen y and all that. And okay. he's like, yeah. But then I think it's like chapter two, it goes to Edwin Reardon, and Edwin Reardon is the is the novelist. He's probably the hero of the thing. Yeah. He's the, probably the more protagonist. similar to George Gissing than anyone else. And okay. he's wrestling right at the start with this terrible novel problem. And it's yep. and that's where it really flies you know i often I when i reread it and reread it i sometimes skip the first bit and i just go to read him because he's just okay. start there and i just keep going okay so start chapter two is what you're saying well no start chapter one okay. if it's the first time okay, okay fair enough i'm um, <laughs> just just before okay cool no I, I will i will read that that sounds fascinating um one one other just little thing before we wrap up because i don't want to take too much of your time um Audiobooks. Now, me, me, and the the writers collective that this you know this podcast is sort of sponsored by, I guess, um, uh, Press of Fiction. We have a uh, a book coming out called The New Mythic, uh, which is nice. It's been uh, uh, recommended for a few Aurealis Awards, which is cool. Oh, um, but we're doing, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We we got we, we got a few little uh, things for that, which is awesome. Um, Hang on. But we're we're doing an audio book now. We're putting it to. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, you won one. I did. I won one. I did. Well, what was that for? 1997. 
That was for a book called um, Eye to Eye. I read it recently. Wow. It's not great. I okay. <laughs> Well, okay. The funny thing is I'm, I'm actually judging for one panel of the Aurealis Awards right now. I'm not going to say which one, because that's, that's unethical, but I am going through it and there's some dross. <laughs> there's some dross in there. I admire you. I've done one of the <clears throat> judging and I wouldn't, I, I found it unbelievably stressful. I can't yeah. bear the passing judgment. I found it so hard. See, I don't mind the passing judgment. It's the, it's the, massive workload that you have to go through well it's a massive it's workload weird. and it's never very well paid yeah um, oh it's and okay you see, I've got a bit, I'm, a, I'm because i'm getting older i'm getting quite I, i'm a bit lazy when it comes to reading i i don't want to spend too much time. and look i was told look just read the first few pages if you don't like it and i feel so guilty like you yeah, know yeah i'm like i gotta read at least 25 percent because there's a there's a system on it that's like zero to five did you like it or didn't you like it? And zero is did not finish. And I just can't bear myself to write. In and read them. <laughs> but I will, but I guarantee you I will not read all those books. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I know. I know. But I mean, how can you? No, it, it's, 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 like, it's, it's extraordinary. There's, there's heaps of them. So yeah, yeah it's, it's pretty, it's pretty rough. Um, so, anyway. you know, after years, you, you kind of get the, like, I'm good enough as a writer and as a pose as a reader that you, you can tell if someone knows yeah. what they're doing. Within, you can tell in three pages for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and whether it's worth going on. I mean, you know, they just know what they're doing. You can yeah, tell. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. One. One other thing. Audiobooks. Do you have any say in how how those c come together? Because I'm I'm listening to the traced one. To be honest, I read a lot of audiobooks. No, nothing to do with it. <laughs> I am given a contract, and okay. I go, okay, I'll sign it. And I'll sign <laughs> sure. it, and then, and then. For the first time ever, text yeah. publishing, unlike any other publishing, anybody mm -hmm. else, or no, it's Belinda, maybe Belinda Books, Belinda Books was has been pub, doing yeah. mine for years. Yeah, Belinda. And lately, over the last few years, they've actually been sending me voice samples. Of, oh, that's cool. Which is amazing. I never yeah. had any choice before. They just decided, yeah. and I would receive it, and it would go bang in. I'd open the parts like, oh, it's an audio book. I didn't even know they were making this, you know, like. So a little... Lately, yeah. over the last about four or five years, they've been sending me, you know, like they usually give me a choice of two. Yeah. They've obviously okay. whittled it down to two, and then, yeah, they right. show, and then they give it to me, and they say, which one do you think? And I and I don't know if they say, I think I prefer this. Maybe they do. I can't remember. But um, I'll, I'll listen for a while and I say, well, honestly, in terms of my mental image of my, you know, my Agnes, yeah. character and yeah. how they speak, it's probably, mm, they're both great, but maybe more this one. But, you know, usually yeah, okay. by the time I get them, they're both brilliant anyway. So Yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, the, the one the one for Trace is incredible. She's she's really yeah. good and just, I know, just right. nails that voice. Like, she nails she sounds it. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Fantastic. Um, I think I think we could probably leave it there. Is is there any, look, let's do the real cliche thing and say, like, is there any advice you would give to a young writer? What's one piece of advice you'd give? Read. <laughs> Read. I, mean, nice. I know that sounds stupid, but if you're going to be writing thrillers, you've got to be reading thrillers. You know what I mean? Sure. And yeah. you've got to be reading good thrillers. Like, don't read crap oh, because crap. because it doesn't give you enough of a bar to head for. Like, I yeah. when I was young, I was reading. There wasn't a lot of – there wasn't the choice there is now, and it's so hard. Choice just makes things harder. But I was reading stuff like George Orwell and Evelyn War, and this is when I was in my teens. Yeah. So, Boy, they knew what they were doing in oh, the yeah. most massive way. Absolutely. I mean, they, they possibly didn't know what they were doing in the modern sense, but even George, like George Orwell has really weathered well. He's still clear oh, the bell. Yeah, you know, 1984 so, is still one of the greatest thrillers ever written, without, without yeah. a doubt. Like, like yeah, and, and his, but his style is still very gripping, like, mm. and like a, like a lot of style. Uh, the, the, the ones that were clear, Somerset Maugham, George Orwell and Evelyn Waugh, they had a clear... I always get those two mixed up Somerset War and Evelyn War. I've read them both, but I always yeah. get them mixed up. <laughs> but like they both had those clear, slim, like lean styles. They're small books. They're, they're little yeah. books. Yeah. 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 Some of them. Some of them. Yeah. Like yeah. Of human bondage is chunky. Yeah. That's but big... Evelyn War knew how to take everything out. Like he, like unlike a lot of the writers at that time, he was just very lean. And so he's Not still, Kenzie, yeah. he's still so funny. Oh my God. Mm. Yeah. Even right. though some of the humor can be a bit. Eh. 
But, um, <laughs> you know, it, it's 1920s. Yeah, I guess just re reading is the most important thing because, frankly, you wouldn't be writing if you weren't into reading, probably. Probably. Yeah, totally. Um, totally. But We're also, totally. I guess it's harder now, but in some ways you have more you have more ways to go. Like yeah. I, there was only one way to go. Like it was like when I when I was at university, there were hardly any different like degrees that you could do. That, mm. You know, like now you have a million different kinds of degrees that can fit. Then you only had sort of one, an arts degree, and it was only with a few things, sure. you know. Yeah, so yeah. nowadays you only had the possibility of publishing on a traditional publishing, and that was it. Yeah. Uh, now I can see my daughter says that probably if I'd been born now, I would be doing much more of this. There are more ways to channel your creativity now. There are Absolutely. lots of different ways. Even I just started to do it with this video channel. Like on the one hand, it's more choice and it's kind of harder. But on the other hand, you've got more places to nail things as opposed yeah. to just one way of doing it. Um, yeah, it's not as homogenized. You can, yes. you can kind of diversify yourself effectively. Yes, cool. and and as you're doing with podcasts and all of these sorts of different things and self-publishing and there's all kinds of things that people can do and I just feel like take advantage of it because I never had it to take advantage of, mm. you know. Yeah. I mean, yeah, sure. I mean, I think honestly, I think the re one of the reasons that we had this surge in children's publishing that really helped me with Harry Potter and a few things that took off. I remember. Like we were only able to publish internationally because of the email. Yeah. Like the right. email came in and suddenly Technology. we were publishing overseas. It was so much easier. Right. Because you didn't have and to mail the manuscript, right? Yes. Mail yeah. manuscript. Well, you couldn't the editing, it. the editing back and forth. I mean, forget about it. Yeah, you know, like yeah, it was yeah. ridiculous. Oh, wow. Whereas yeah. emails, you could just, so it was, it's just like, and that just opened up Australian publishing. Like just the email. So <laughs> I know it sounds funny, but no, no, for now sure. Now that you've got all of these other things, you can open things up. And and if you're particularly, if you if you I don't know, if you understand branding and but the thing is, branding and all of that stuff is one thing, but it's who you are that's what's going down on the paper. Yeah. And yeah, of course. You know, and if the tr the trouble is, if you're not, if you're a bit different. But now you see, you can find your different little you find a niche. Audience, yeah. Whereas once upon a time you couldn't. So if you're a bit different and you didn't quite fit into that one homogenous thing, you were stuffed. You couldn't do it. Yeah, like, right. It's not going to happen. But anyway, that's all I'm. <laughs> like yeah. At, well, so, so yeah, just just diversify and find your niche. I guess is. I look. I'm beginning to think that's the way. The look. The other thing is. Yeah, I mean, it's funny because the the, the traditional publishers are trying to find their way right now because yeah. it's becoming so difficult. Sure. They're all in a bit of a, a state. They don't know. They don't, like, they're trying to find what's going to sell and that's really, really hard. Sure. Then my aid, so, and so that's what they're, then my agent and I are trying to work out what the publishers are wanting, like, because, yeah. you know what I mean? It's this, it's looking for the mark. The market thing is is so sure. profound at the moment. And that is so bad for the way you write. I know <laughs> I know it's been bad for writing me. to like, market, yeah. My writing to market is so hard. But if you've done it for years, if you've done writing for years, you can channel it. And look, some people have it as their jobs for for in the creative industry, in like in like advertising and you know, so it's not impossible. Mm. You know what I mean? It depends what you're writing for to some yeah. degree. Yeah. Yeah, I know? guess it depends what you want to get out of it, you know? Yes, and what you want to get out of it. Yeah, it's like some people want to write exclusively to, you know, like there, there's plenty of self-publishing people who are churning out books, like just literally churning them out at a faster rate than than you or I or, or anyone I know. Well, like that's somebody who needs, sort of you see, that's somebody who needs yeah. to write. They yeah. have to, they, to, to cope. Yeah, like yeah, it's, yeah. It's, that's it's part of who they are. And look, yeah. fair enough. I mean, hey, mm. it's a great coping. I've, I've, I mean, I'm not like I probably do need a therapist, but I haven't had one all these years because yeah. I've been right. Because you've written it down. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, not exactly written it down. It's not a written it down. I don't No, do, but, but you've channeled it. I you've don't go from creativity. here and bring it out. Yeah. I'm a person who goes there and brings it in. And, no. and the, the idea is 
you get so you 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 create the world that you're happy in. Yes. You're, and it's not like you're exploring your own, which some people do in in writing. That's what they do. That's what their whole thing is, and that's mm. fine. And often they're the finest books. But um, I just want to escape into something that. Yeah. Yeah, you, know, you, just, you just don't want, want to get lost in a book for a couple of yeah. hours. I'm the same way. I, uh, I mean, like I said, I run a guitar school and I uh, just go out flying every day. And you better believe I've got an audio book that I'm, I'm doing that. <laughs> and yeah. then when I get home, I got another physical book that I, that I read. It's, it's, but, yeah. it's, but when you're actually writing, you need to escape. Yes. The, the, the flow state, as you know, that you get into when you're actually just cobbling sentences together. Yeah. The craft of it, as opposed to the creativity of it, which is when you're yeah. creating the ideas. That can the creating the ideas thing. Nothing feels better than when you get the right one. You yeah. Just go, oh, a, that's so good. It's but, a rush. But it can also be very stressful because you're trying yeah. to get this bit and this bit and join them together, and it's not working, and it's not working, and it's not working, and it's not working, and you're just going. Oh. Yeah. But it's... when you're cobbling the words together, that's more craft, and it's yeah. absorbing, and you need yeah. everything else, and it's just the world just disappears. It just yeah. disappears. The only thing I would compare it to, and it, it's not, it, it's probably a, f a fairly music. obvious comparison, is playing on stage music. It's yes. it's the same thing. It's the same thing where you're you're in the moment, and it, it's like there's usually a lot more alcohol involved in music, but uh, but you you're in the flow state, and you're just doing it. And and those two things are really the only time that I've found that piece of you know that that sense of like oh I'm I'm here, I'm in the world. You know what I mean? Like, yes. You're yes. completely present. It's uh. It's well, really I'm strange. I'm not exactly present when I'm putting. putting well, no, it's not you're present, but like you're you're absorbed is probably a better. Yeah, way you're ab absolutely absorbed. absorbed. Yeah, and the time passes, and then the satisfaction when it's you got it together and you sit back and you look at what you've done and you go, I did, I just did fifteen hundred words and yeah, I didn't yeah, notice. Yeah. It's crazy. It's a crazy, crazy thing. Yeah. Uh, all right, I think that's probably a good good place to good leave. Time to sign off. Yeah, thank, thank you, so you so much. much for... Much for... <laughs> no, no, thank you. <laughs> Jinx. Oh, wait. <laughs> yeah, get that along. Um, anyway. <laughs> sorry. Uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, thanks so much for joining me. Well, and, I must um... have a, I'm, yes, I'll, I'll have a, sorry, I'm, I'll go and have a look. A look. I think I'll look. I, I'm, I'm better on YouTube than I am. Yeah, yeah, ch check it out. And what was the name of your YouTube channel again? So just, just so I can put it on the end here. Storybook. Cottage writer, storybook cottage writer. I've actually, yeah, uh, I'm going to be talking like I'm going, it's going to be sort of moving between scenic mountain stuff, gardens, and what have you, and and kind of relating that to various aspects of the story process, cool. like things that you need, like mystery or magic, or things that you do, like starting a book, like starting stuff trying to relate that back to or or getting ideas or anything like that. That's or inspiration, blah, blah, blah. So it's kind of a, a mixture of kind of tech, you know, like write, writing procedure. Yeah. And just nice flowers yeah. and trees and buildings. Oh, and... <laughs> we, we love some thematic resonance. I love it. I'm all about it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, cool, Captain. I'll, uh, I'll see Thank you later. You. I'll see you yeah. yeah. Bye. You're listening to Pros and Cons, the Precipice Fiction Podcast.